Dry tests for some radicals. Some dry tests like clamp tests are very important as these give a very clear indication of the presence of some radical. Since these tests are carried out by burning some chemicals in the flame of a Bunsen burner, hence it is necessary to first have a good knowledge of various parts of Bunsen flame. The figure of the Bunsen flame is given here. The non-luminous Bunsen flame consists of three parts. Number one, an inner blue cone ADB consisting largely of unburnt gas. Second, a luminous tip at D which is visible only when the air holes of the burner are slightly closed. Third, an outer mantle ACBD in which complete combustion of the gas occurs. Further, as shown in the figure above, A is the base of the flame where the temperature is lowest. This area is employed for testing volatile substances that is to determine whether they impart any color to the flame. The point B this is the hottest part of the flame known as fusion zone and lies at about one third of the height of the flame. C. This is known as lower oxidizing zone and is situated on the outer border of B and may be used for the oxidation of substances present in the beads of borax. D. This is known as upper oxidizing zone and consists of non-luminous tip of the flame. Here a large excess of oxygen is present and the flame is not so hot as C. It is used for those oxidations where higher temperature is not required. E. This is known as upper reducing zone. It is at the tip of the inner blue cone and is rich in incandescent carbon. This is employed for reducing the oxides of metals. F. This is known as lower reducing zone. It is situated in the inner edge of the mantle next to the blue cone. This is less powerful reducing zone than E. With this much knowledge of the flame, now we can go for the study of various dry tests. These are mainly A. Flame test B. Borax bead test C. Charcoal cavity test Let us first discuss A. Flame test For performing such a test, a platinum wire is fused in a glass rod and heated in the flame till it gives colorless flame. This is done by dipping the wire in concentrated hydrochloric acid and heating that in the flame. Repeat this till it gives a colorless flame. After cleaning the platinum wire in this manner, it, it is again dipped in concentrated HCl and then bring its tip in the contact with the dry salt or mixture to be tested. Then this tip is strongly heated in the lower oxidizing zone C of the flame and the color imparted to the flame is observed. The colors imparted to the flame by salts of different metals are shown in the following table. So here is a table giving colors of flame, color observed, and caused by. So, persistent golden yellow flame is given by sodium, violet or lilac flame by potassium, carmine red flame by lithium, brick red that is yellowish flame is by calcium, crimson red flame by strontium, yellowish green flame by barium and green flame by copper.